Now this teaches us this, that Satan is serious about our bondage. Yes, sir. But God is more serious about our deliverance. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know Satan is serious about your bondage when he says the elite of the elite in his camp. Right. Think about it. Those who are now in victorious believers church. Hmm. Whatever you're going through, Satan is serious about you going through it and staying in it. Somebody else is going through what they're going through. Satan ain't really worried about them. He sends his lightweights. Right. But for us, is, yeah. can I say that? Yeah. For the us is in the camp, mm -hmm. he sends the creme de la creme that he got. Right. Satan is very serious about your bondage, yet God is more serious about your deliverance. Right. This is why it's important that we come to agreement so folks can get victory. Right. I know it's not exciting. It's not exciting because I didn't tell you to take up your shield. March. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't tell you to line up like a soldier and struggle. I said, find somebody to pray with. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that wasn't exciting. That, that don't make you. That don't make you do that. That's, that's, that's too tedious. It's too tiresome. And, and prayer don't work. Nevertheless, it ain't going to work until you pray with somebody that knows how to pray. For those who can't stand on our feet, we turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 20 through 23. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, <clears throat> verses 20 through 23. We have that on the board for those who don't have their Bibles or their e-Bibles. <laughs> says, now, now because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader, and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem, in presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. We're going to continue on in our series, or we'll conclude our series, The Fight After Faithfulness. This account is also found in 2 Kings chapters 18 and 19, as well as Isaiah chapter 36 and 37. I hope for those who've been able to participate, you've been able to read the other accounts because it brings the whole picture together. Amen. Verses 1 through 8, we discuss same war different battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verses 9 through 19, we discussed, don't believe the lies. Today, we'll conclude with, pray for victory. Pray for victory. In verse 20, Hezekiah and Isaiah come together where we get our theme for verse 20, a dualistic intercession. A dualistic intercession. Let's read what verse 20 says. It says, now because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. Because of Sennacherib's threats, Hezekiah and Isaiah bombarded heaven. Remember, Sennacherib is sitting outside the gate. He's posing up with 185,000. He gives them these threats. He threatens them. He gives them a history lesson. He even got the audacity to write a letter. You know it's serious when you write a letter. He, he writes this letter and it's such a terroristic threat that Hezekiah goes to the prophet Isaiah and they both come together to intercede. This duo, this dynamic divine duo that God has given the children of Israel come into agreement on behalf of the people of God so God can move. This is a dualistic intercession. Hezekiah is wise enough and mindful enough to understand that I need to talk to somebody who's going to pray. Right, yeah. He's not foolish enough to say I'm going to pray and deal with this by myself. He says, the moment these things come to me and it becomes overwhelming to me, I'm going to somebody I know yeah. got God's attention. Yeah. This is important because when the Sennacherib of our lives threaten us, yeah. you got to know who you can pray with. Yeah. You need to know who you can go to when times get tough. Get tough. Yeah. You need to know who you can call on that's going to pray for you and not talk about you after y'all done praying. Right, right. 
It's important that you understand that if you are a Isaiah or a Hezekiah, you need the opposite. Yeah. So you can come into agreement with somebody else. Yeah. Now, the reason why that's important is because Paul had silence. Y'all yeah. 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 know he's in prison? Yeah. And they were both praying and dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Paul had silence. Yeah. Uh, I think that's important that Paul had silence. We should also have a partner to pray with. Yeah. Then you have the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's important that you know somebody that you can go to yeah. and they can pray for and with you. Y'all yeah. yeah. remember when Peter was in prison yeah. and the church was praying for him? Yeah. Peter had the church. Yeah. You got to know who you can depend on that can get, get their words through the ceiling to God's ear. Yeah. So they, this is important. This is important uh, that they both came together. They are renowned. You know, I like reading the Bible because when you read the Bible, you get a chance to see famous people were also in the same area. Yeah. You know, we read Isaiah and don't even think about Hezekiah and him being in the same environment. Right. But they were in the same environment. Yeah. Oh, what if I told you that if you were Hezekiah, you also got an Isaiah in your environment? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Maybe you're an Isaiah, you probably got Hezekiah somewhere in your environment. Yeah. 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 And God says, come into agreement so I can do some moving. Yeah. Right. All right, y'all done with that. Hezekiah and Isaiah intercede on behalf of the children of Israel based on Sennacherib's threats, based on Sennacherib's letters, his intentions to attack, harm, and keep the children of Israel bound. However, Hezekiah also prays by himself after him and Isaiah pray. Now, it's not that he was not faithful or confident in the prayer that Isaiah gave alongside him, but sometimes you just got to keep on praying. Even by yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing because Isaiah had assured him of what God said he was going to do. He said, God's going to deliver. He said, God's going to send the spirit that's going to him, allow him to cause a, him a rumor, and he's going to leave the land. Yet, Hezekiah still went and prayed by himself. Yeah. And what he prayed, when you read 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 14 through 19, he gets the letter that Sennacherib had, and he presents it to the Lord, and he says, Lord, this is what Sennacherib has been saying about you. Y'all like that. He, he takes this letter and gets messy with the Messiah. <laughs> like some of y'all messy anyway. <laughs> I'm just giving you permission to be messy this time. So he's, he gets this letter and says, God, this is what he's been talking about you about. Yeah. In other words, you got to know how to instigate a fight between God and the devil. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So he takes this letter and he says, God, Sennacherib said you're weak. God, Sennacherib say you, you, you ain't going to do nothing. Okay. Sennacherib said he got a history record that's greater than your record. I, I'm just telling you what Sennacherib said. Yeah, yeah. Right. Some of us messy and matters that we ain't got no business being messy. Right. Nevertheless, God is giving you permission to be messy so you can have victory, not just on your behalf, but on behalf of other people. In other words, tell God what Sennacherib said. And if you're going to say anything to Sennacherib, tell Sennacherib what, what God said. Y'all not listening. That's all right. If you're going to be messy, you got to know how to be messy. You got to know how to tell the enemy what God said. Because every time you tell the enemy what God said, let me tell you something about God. He can back it up. God is undefeated. So if you're going to say something to the enemy, make sure you tell the enemy about what God said and not what you feel. Because the moment you start telling the enemy what you feel, he got you. So, Sennacherib posted up. He and his, his messengers, they talking a lot of noise. Initially, they talking in a language that the leaders could understand. But they see all of the soldiers on the wall. And because they recognize that the soldiers ain't budging to what we say, they start talking to the soldiers in Hebrew language, which we come to understand that Satan will speak to you in your language. And when Satan starts talking to you in your language, you don't start talking back in his. Never mind. So, the, the soldiers realize they're talking to them, but they don't answer. Don't answer the enemy unless you're going to give them what God got to say. Right, 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 right. So if God's going to say something, you should be the vessel by which he says it. But if God ain't saying nothing, neither should you. So you got to know how to instigate a fight between God and the devil. Tell God what Sennacherib was saying about him. Tell Sennacherib what God said about him. Right. And when they both meet, the winner going to be the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Now notice this. The text says that they both prayed and cried. 
They prayed and cried. Pray is petition, but crying is passion. They prayed to God, but they also had passion behind what they were praying. The reason why they were not just praying, but also doing it passionately, because the threat was real. See, the threat was real enough to invoke an emotion that they probably wouldn't normally give. Sennacherib is serious about our bondage, right, right. and it's worthy of our tears being cried out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sennacherib is serious about us being held in the stronghold, right. and it's worthy of us not only opening our mouths, but also shedding tears alongside of it. Yeah. So how it went was like, help us, God! Right. Right. Sennacherib was trying to kill us. Deliver us, Jesus! Sennacherib was trying to keep us bound. Yeah. Yeah. But while I'm telling you to help us, God, this is what Sennacherib said about you. He says, you weak and ain't got no power. Help us, Lord. He says, you impotent and not omnipotent. Help us, Lord. And as y'all cry, and as we cry out together, this duo coming to agreement together, God is actually waiting to do something that he was not going to do until we came into agreement. Uh, is it possible that God ain't moved yet because we ain't came to agreement? Is it possible that God said, I see you praying by yourself when I want you to partner up with somebody else? Maybe we've been doing it dolo for so long, for so long, not realizing that we're so wrong. Right, 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 man. I, I, I feel like I got to sneeze. You know? <laughs> oh, they, they prayed and cried. They prayed and cried to heaven. Yeah. To heaven. Daniel chapter four verse twenty six says, "Heaven rules." which is the first and only euphemism for God. When it says that heaven rules, it's actually talking about God rules. When you read Daniel 4 and 17, it's talking about the, the most high rules in the kingdom or the affairs of men. It's the only time a euphemism for God is relegated with heaven. But this is important. This is important. I'm, I'm doing my best. This is important because it's two of them. They come into agreement. Two is a, a number of unity. It's a, a number of agreement. It's two of them. This goes back to Genesis on the second day when God created heaven. Two. God been teaching us a principle about two. That because if two of us agree on earth concerning anything that we ask, it shall be done for us by our Father in heaven. Uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 30 says that, that one can chase a thousand, but two. 10,000. No, Genesis 2 and 18. It's not good that man should be alone. I will make a help. I will give him two so they can start reproducing and replicating me. God says sometimes in order for you to get access to heaven, you're going to need two. 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 It, maybe Isaiah and Hezekiah understood a principle about two that somehow, some reason that the church still ain't figured out. That these two came into agreement. These two came into a grip and touched heaven, the Lord. And not only did they touch him, they got his attention. Yeah. So much to the point that we're going to see in verse 21, God's going to do something. Now, if you understand the principle, then you should also do the practice. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. Ain't no sense in understanding principles and ain't practicing them. Yes, so if you understand the principle of two, right. it's time you find your partner for two. Okay, no, no, I'm gone. So Hezekiah is God's divine reformer. He helps shape the glory of God in Israel. Isaiah is God's divine informer. He would tell the people what God said. The divine informer and the divine reformer talk to the deified transformer. Mm -hmm. The reformer and the informer both come into agreement with the transformer. Yeah. When we go to God for his reform, with his word as our inform, we can expect the Lord our God to transform. Yeah. You, you, do, you not, do you not realize that transformation is not something that can happen in and of itself? It's going to require something else. We want God to do things, yet we do not honor what he wants us to do. You know, I think it's selfish and lazy that we send a God everywhere. Hospitals, prisons, homeless. We get so bad, help my lady. Yeah, here we are. 
able body. Vehicle got gas in it. Body got scrap in it. That's why I said scrap. And and God says, if you go, I'm with you. And I will reform to transform. But because all we want to do is just inform and not bring about his reform, we don't see God's transformation. Which teaches us this. Never underrate the power of praying together. Don't underrate the power and the value of praying together. That's why the enemy makes it so hard for us to find somebody to pray with. And to pray with consistently. Because if you can find a consistent prayer partner, you can continue to keep the enemy at bay. Never underrate the value or the power of praying together with somebody that you know can get God, can get, a, uh, get a prayer through. But in verse 21, we have divine intervention. Divine intervention. Listen to what it says. It says, Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader, and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword them. Let me, I want to read 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Just, I'm going to read this real fast. It said, and it came to pass on a certain night that the angel, that an angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. 185,000. I'm going to say it again. 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, there were corpses. All dead. 185,000 soldiers Dead. When Isaiah and Hezekiah came to agreement, God got to work. Yeah. Nobody had to pick up a sword. Mm -hmm. Nobody had to lift up a shield. No. Nobody broke a sweat when Isaiah and Hezekiah came to agreement. 185,000 great soldiers were slain mm -hmm. when two came into agreement. Um, God math ain't good. You know, ah. If one can chase a thousand and two ten thousand, that 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 don't add up on earth. That doesn't make sense. One plus one equals. However, God sent one angel that destroyed a hundred and eighty-five thousand enemies. The Lord sent an angel to handle his lightweight. It it wasn't even God saying I got it. He said, "Go take care of that for me." Isaiah and Hezekiah talking to me. While they were sleeping, God was fighting. When two come to agreement, God sends angels on behalf of the, the people of the body of Christ so he can get the glory and we can get some sleep. Y'all not listening to me. God sends one, that one angel that killed 185,000. What would happen if, if what would happen if it wasn't Isaiah and Hezekiah? What would happen if it was Isaiah, Hezekiah, and somebody else? Maybe God would have sent two. What would happen if we stopped just praying with ourselves? What would happen? How many angels would God send if we start praying with partners? What would happen when the church start praying together? How many angels would God actually send on behalf of the body of Christ and our bondages and our issues and our infirmities and our, and our desires for better if we would actually just start honoring what God said we're supposed to do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Divine intervention. All right. Now, before the Lord killed the Assyrians, again, he sent Sennacherib a spirit that caused him to hear Rome and return to his own land, and that dropped the guard of the, of the soldiers. But let's talk about these Assyrian soldiers, shall we? Number one, they are mighty men of valor. These are the elites of the elites. They are the creme de la creme. Sennacherib was so cold that he was already fighting in Lachish and he was winning. Got victory, started to go fight somebody else and still had 185,000 to spell. Of the elites. Because he understood that the Lord, their God, fought for them. He heard about the Romans. He heard that God was a, was a God of war. He wasn't tripping when it came to it. And, they, and he could get victory. So he sent the best that he could bring. The elites. But then he had their leaders, which are commanders. And it says, every captain in the camp, which are the generals. Now this teaches us this. That Satan is serious about our bondage. Yes, sir. But God is more serious about our deliverance. You know Satan is serious about your bondage when he says the elite of the elite in his camp. 
Think about it. Those who are now in victorious believers' church. Whatever you're going through, Satan is serious about you going through it and staying in it. Right. Right. Somebody else is going through what they're going through. Satan ain't really worried about them. He sends his lightweights. Right. But for us, yeah. can I say that? Yeah. For the us in the camp, he sends the creme de la creme that he got. Right. Satan is very serious about your bondage, yet God is more serious about your deliverance. Right. This is why it's important that we come to agreement so folks can get victory. Right. 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 I know it's not exciting. Yeah, good. It's not exciting because I didn't tell you to take up your shield. <laughs> March. I didn't, I didn't tell you to line up like a soldier and strut. I said find somebody to pray with. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, that wasn't exciting. That, that don't make you, that don't make you do that. That's 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 too tedious. It's too tiresome and, and, and prayer don't work. Nevertheless, it ain't gonna work until you pray with somebody that know how to pray. Now, we talked about this during the first service. I figured it's right out, echo it. One angel killed 185,000 soldiers, and that angel wasn't named Michael. That's a lower angel. Yeah, yeah, right, listen. Right, right. One, one. Who was it? It didn't even have a name. Yeah. This, second team. This second team. Second team angel. No, no disrespect. Yeah, yeah. Second team angel. Uh, no. Uh, substitute angel. And, and did work on 185,000 of Satan's elites. Are you listening to what the Spirit says in the church? Yeah. When we start coming into agreement, yeah. even if he sent his lesser angels, right. it's going to be mightier than you putting your hands to it and getting it worse. Right. Amen. Now, don't expect divine intervention when you don't listen. Come on, sir. Don't expect God to move in a mighty way when you won't obey. Right. Y'all quit expecting God to do stuff and we've been disobedient. Stop expecting God to intervene in our matters when we act like prayer don't matter. Let me go to the B clause of this. Uh, we got singles. We got singles in tonight. It says, so he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. Sennacherib, this renowned leader, returned to his own land in something called Hebrew called Bosheth Panim. Bosheth Panim. Shame faith. It means he was visibly embarrassed. Mind you, he just got victory with another group. And he was on his way to move another group. Yeah, because he, he came up against the wrong group. He left visibly embarrassed. Shame faith. You ever, you ever fail in public? You know, that, that, that face. Sennacherib. And so, if it happened again, just, come, just say Sennacherib. <laughs> Notice this prideful man has been embarrassed, and the people of God didn't have to lift a finger. Wow. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. While we may not have to lift our finger, we will have to bend our knees. Yes. While we may not have to lift our hands, it might require us to open our mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yet he left shamefaced. Embarrassed, then went to his own church to get killed by his own kids. Wow. Now, this, 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 just follow me, just follow me. Because Sennacherib is a type of sin, a type of Satan, a type of devil. And God is letting us get into a glimpse of what happens in the spirit world when we obey God. Yeah. See, when, when, when the saints obey God, we see that the enemies of our life can leave assaulted and ashamed. Y'all yeah. know this? Yeah. They can leave assaulted and ashamed. Uh, assaulted by the heavens camp and ashamed because we obey God. Is it possible that when we obey God through prayer, through obedience, that every time we commit ourselves to the Lord and we're defeating the enemy, that he got to go back to his own camp, embarrassed and assaulted? Maybe they turn on each other because of our obedience and unity. I used to hear this all the time. You don't never hear the enemy fighting until I read this. It's too much pride in the enemy's camp for them not to go against each other. It's too much hatred and vitriol for them not to for them to always be in agreement. Ain't, ain't no love in the enemy's camp. You 
Think about it. In the world today, that's something called ambition. And we got the Holy Ghost. You think the enemy's camp ain't got ambition? And that they're going to experience such ridicule from being defeated by our obedience and love to Christ? That it ain't going to cause a riffraff inside the enemy's camp? So I used to play basketball. I used to be pretty good. Uh, one of the best things I love to see was when we were whooping the team so bad that they started fighting each other. Right. Right. We used to love when we they called a timeout, came out to play, and we destroyed that little play that they did. And they called another timeout, and they called another play, and then we destroyed that thing again. And they called another timeout, and they, we destroyed it. And they go in there, they start arguing with each other. We say, got them. <laughs> we got them. Y'all not listening to me. Yes, yeah. Every time the enemy attack you, and you go to your prayer partner through obedience and faith, and you do not give Sennacherib your opinion, you give Sennacherib what God said. And they start fighting each other. All you gotta do is say, I got them. Yeah. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to lift up no, no fish. You ain't gotta get angry or upset. All you gotta do is just continue to obey God, and Sennacherib is gonna start fighting against each other. And all you gotta do is say, Lord, I thank you, we got them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, uh, this, is, this is important that I say this. When, when the saints, now notice I said that. Yeah, the saints. When the saints stay in unison through obedience, the enemies become divided unto violence. Mm -hmm. I didn't say this in the first service. Y'all forgive me for those who are here. How do you know if the enemies are fighting against each other in your life? Things that would normally work against you start to collapse. Right. Yeah. I'm going to give y'all an example. It used to be a point in time when I was a hothead. And the things that would make me mad, I would immediately snap. Yes, sir. Well, then I stopped snapping. And I'm like, Lord, I thank you. It yeah. me. It's starting to collapse. Right. And when things that normally got you out of character yes, start to put you into the character of Christ, right. the enemies are actually collapsing. Yeah. Yeah. They're fighting against each other. All right, verse 22. I'm about to sit down. Verse 22 deals with deliverance implemented. You can't expect deliverance to be implemented in your life when you obey. It says, Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. The Lord delivered the people of God from Sennacherib and others, which teaches us this. The Lord will deliver us not only from Sennacherib, the Sennacheribs in our lives, but other, from the power of other looming enemies. The Lord will deliver us not only from the Sennacheribs in our lives, but from the power of other looming enemies. Notice that the text says that the Lord delivered Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, as well as from the hand of all other enemies. Hands represent power or authority. God's so strong. God's so cold. God, God say, let him go. He, he delivered them from the hand of Sennacherib. Let them go. Yeah. Yeah. He's strong. He's the Lord of hosts. Yeah. The Lord delivered them from the present danger, but then he also protected them from the looming dangers. Their hand. Those who were there and were ready to pounce on the people of God. God, not only, when you read this text, he gives them uh, preservation and deliverance, both present tense and future tense. So not only has he delivered you, he delivered you already to deliver you. Right, 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 all right. All right, it's like this. He delivered you. And that deliverance is so strong that he had to deliver you in the future, yet he already did. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing best I can. He, he's delivered you now. From Sennacherib. Right. But the deliverance from Sennacherib was so strong that there are other enemies who wait to get you. No. Yet he delivered you so strong that they can't get you, yeah. even though when they have you, they ain't got you. Because he delivered you. Yes, so they are there ready to prounce, but can't prounce. Yeah. But when they do prounce, they had done nothing and they prounce because he deli <laughs> delivered you. Hallelujah. That's the Lord our God. Now let's talk, talk about this type of preservation in the Lord's, uh, this type of deliverance that the Lord gives. The first is preservation. He gives preservation in his deliverance. He says that he saved them. 
that's internal. It comes from the Hebrew word yasha. It's not only to rescue, it's not only to deliver, but it's also to preserve. He preserves them. In other words, internally, he, he saved them spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with your sennacheribs, your emotions get out of whack. Right. No. Your blood pressure get up. Your head start hurt. He preserved them so things didn't get out of place. He kept them. He made sure that they did not get out of what it needs to be in the will of God. That's internal. But then he also protected them. When he says that he guided them on every side, that actually means he guarded them. That's external. He externally protected them. So check this out. On one side was goodness. On another side was mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the back side was loving kindness. Yeah. Blind side was favor. Right. They wanted to get them, but it was too much goodness in one place. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. They tried to captivate them, but it was too much mercy over here. Yeah. Even when we didn't realize they were coming behind us on our blind side, it was mercy following us. Right, right. It was too much goodness following us. Yeah, right. He protected them or guided them along the journey. He's the greatest travel guide you can have. Yes, because not only does he take you where you're going, yes. he makes sure you get there. Yes, yes. All right. yes. Now, when the saints pray, the Lord reinforces his preserving and protecting power. It's already there, but he reinforces it when we pray. Yeah. My kids have my help, but they only have so much of my help. Yeah. In other words, because uh, they grown. If they don't ask for my help, I ain't gonna help. Uh, Y'all, that's, that's bad parenting. Oh, they grown. But when they want daddy help, all they gotta do is ask. Oh, Y'all listening. They grown. Let them go out and make their own decisions. Let them adult it up. And I let them know, I'm here if you need me. It's already there. But when you ask, it's reinforced. In other words, it becomes more prevalent and prominent in your life when you come to into, into agreement. Yeah, yeah. All right, lastly, lastly, I'm about to sit down. In verse 23, you will have distribution of intimates. Distribution of intimates. It says, and many brought the gifts, many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem in presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. Because of the Lord's flawless victory, the people of God brought gifts of worship and presents of appreciation. These gifts, these items meant something to them. This wasn't something that they brought, that they found on the side of the road and decided to bring it. This was something that meant a lot to them. It, it was in their houses, it was in their closets, it was in their storehouses. It meant a lot. And they brought gifts of worship and presents of appreciation. Which teaches us that when you're grateful, you give greatly. Right. Mm -hmm. many, many, many. When, right. when you're grateful, you give greatly. Yeah, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't just say you're grateful. You, you give something. Right. This thing? Yes, sir. <laughs> when you are grateful, you give greatly. Now, it don't have to be thousands of dollars. Because you ain't got it, you can't get it. But it may be five. It may be five dollars. You give it greatly because you are grateful. Yeah. It, it may not. You may not be able to come by and just sit down with a person for thirty minutes like they desire. But you, you may be able to give a little bit of five minutes, yeah, yeah. and you give it greatly. Yeah. See, when you are grateful, you give greatly, Thank you, Lord. and the measurement of your gratitude will be exemplified in your giving. Yes, Amen. Amen. I know it. You ain't got to tell me. I'm on the couch. I know it. Because most of us give lip service and think that's good enough. When the Lord said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Sometimes it ain't about what you say, it's about what you give. Mm -hmm. But let's make this distinction. There are gifts of worship. That belongs to God, while there are presence of appreciation. That belongs to man. When he says that many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem, this word in Hebrew is minka. Sennacherib told Hezekiah that in order for him not to be attacked, he had to go back to the ways of his father and pay a tribute. This is the same Hebrew word. The tribute would mean that I, you belong to me. If you don't want me to conquer you again, pay me a tribute because you mine. 
It was a form of worship. Well, they are giving their gifts, their minka, as a tribute that God owes, that God owns them. That God is their sole proprietor. A sole proprietor is somebody who exclusively owns and takes care of a business. God is exclusively theirs. They are exclusively God's. So instead of them giving the gift of worship to Hezekiah, they brought their gift of worship to God. And they paid this minka, this tribute, because God owns them. We worship you, God. We don't worship Sennacherib. Right. Y'all gotta listen to that. We give you our tributes. We give you our gifts. We give you our offerings. Because you are worthy of our worship. Uh, Psalm 96 verses 6 through 8 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering. Bring a gift. Bring a tribute. Enter into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You, How are you worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness if you ain't giving him nothing? They understood the principle. Mm -hmm. It was a tribute of worship. And because God is the sole proprietor of the people of God, it's only right that he is our sole proprietor. S-O-L-E as well as S-O-U-L. Now what made this gift important during these times is that they may have never been able to give it again. They didn't have the currency flow that we have today. If they saved up and bought something that was so valuable, it was invaluable, they may have never gotten that chance again. Some of the gifts that they gave God was so valuable that they probably just would have held them for as heirlooms to give to their family so they could, it could be a family heirloom. And they gave that. This brings about the question. What is something that's so valuable that you can only give it to God once and only? Maybe not just for the first time, but for the final time. Uh -huh. What's something so valuable that only God is worthy of it? That you can only give it to him exclusively? Your soul. Your soul is the only thing that you can give that's so valuable that you can only give it once. You can give it for the first time as well as for the final time. And God will bless it for all time. When the Lord delivers, gifting him worship is the worthy response. I said this in the first service, I'm echoing this. How much has God done for you from Sunday to this Sunday that, that's worthy of worship? All of us should be hoarse. All of us should need, we should have a napkin ministry. Because we're passing them out so much. All of us should be in a place where He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. And because I cannot tell it all, I give him all of me. Because when he's been so good, the worldly response is worship. Worship. Not being so concerned about my partner next to me. I don't want them to look at me crying. Look at these tears. Look at this snot rolling off my face. Give me a napkin. He's been good to me. Yeah. I'm going to scream until I hoarse. Yeah. Until my voice crack. Yeah. I'm going to give him all of me because of all he's done for me. Yeah. I ain't worried about you right now. Yeah. I'm going to give God all my worship. Yeah. Oh, secret. It ain't worship if it ain't all. Yeah. If you hide and hold it, it ain't worship. Right. It's a form of something. But it ain't worship. But let's move on. Let's move on. Now we talk about the presence of appreciation. That goes to man. Presence of appreciation goes to man. It says, and, pre and presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Presence comes from the Hebrew word mignon. And it's all they're precious jewels. In other words, they would give these precious valuables that they had that were not forms of worship, but signs of gratitude to the man of God. To the leader. Presence of precious gems that can bless and encourage the leader. Because and I hadn't talked to him, and he ain't talked to me. But sometimes the leader can feel like we don't appreciate him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the leader can feel like what he does is not appreciated. Sometimes the leader can feel, and I say feel, like what, we, what he's doing is falling on deaf ears and on hard hearts. 
But when you give him presence, yeah, yeah. it can encourage him to know that we appreciate you. Yeah. Now, don't compare your presence to other people's presence. That's right. That's right. Because God knows your presence. That's right. But the leader will appreciate your presence. Right. So just because you don't bring this big old valuable car, <laughs> because somebody else brought a big old valuable car, mm -hmm. don't compare your presence to somebody else's presence. Amen. Now, I worked on this, y'all. I worked on this. I need somebody to shout. I need somebody to scream. Maybe Sister Vita to get up and run. I, need... I worked on this one. Spent a lot of time here. Presence are the voice of appreciation, which silences the volume of depreciation. Presence are the voice of appreciation that silences the volume of depreciation. In other words, if Pastor Singleton is feeling depreciated, appreciation will silence that, that remote yeah, that's right. and highlight the volume of what we appreciate about him. Because yeah. you don't know how much time he spent in the closet right. for your baby. Right. You don't know how many sacrifices he's made right. for your victory. Right. You don't know how much time he spent away from his wife and his children for your victory. You don't know how much fasting and praying has entailed for your victory. Right, 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 right. You don't know how many times he told himself no for your victory. Right, right. So when you give him presents, yeah, yeah. not just your mouth, right, right. presents present yeah. something yeah. as a sign of appreciation, it silences the volume of depreciation. Yeah, now the text says this, the text says this, uh, Hezekiah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. Mm -hmm. Obedience leads to exaltation. Mm -hmm. right. Obedience brings exaltation, yeah. not instant gratification. Right, 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 right. Because sometimes obeying God don't feel good. Sure sometimes you get tired of obeying God. Yeah. That's right, preacher said. Yeah. Sometimes it grieves you to keep obeying God. But it's not God's way of keeping you down. It's actually God's way of bringing you up. So what God does is as you obey him and things ain't moving or working as fast as you want them to move or work, God is sanctifying you and growing you. So by the time he places you somewhere physically, he's already got you there spiritually. So Hezekiah was brought up and exalted amongst all of the nations. When the scripture says many brought, it wasn't just talking about Jerusalem, talking about those from other nations. Listen to this. People from other nations came to worship the Lord and appreciate Hezekiah. Pastor Singleton's walk is great in the Lord. So much to the point where people are coming from other places not only to worship the Lord, but they're going to show him appreciation. And it comes in a time that you least expect it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the saints pray in obedience, don't believe the lies of the enemy, and let the Lord fight our battles, it will lead to nationwide attention that we do not expect. Now, for those of you who know the, who know the man of God in this house, if you know him, if you love him, if you appreciate him, stand on your feet and give him a round of applause. appreciation, it infuels the inspiration. Right. And it gives the man of God more motive to continue to do the work of God. Amen. Now, victory is to be prayed for, not paid for. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Victory is to be prayed for, not paid for. Because it was already paid for. Yes. By a man named Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. On a hill called Calvary. Yeah. Skull-shaped mountain called Golgotha. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he extended his right hand on our behalf. Yeah. Right, right. Extended his left hand on our behalf. Yeah. Let them fold his feet on our behalf. Yeah, right. Let them beat him on his back on our behalf. Yeah, right. Let them beat, let them beat him and destroy it on our behalf. Yeah. He performed many signs, miracles, and wonders, then charged nobody a thing. Yeah. Healed the sick, then charged them. Yeah. Raised the dead, then charged them. So you can't see them here, yeah. Then charge them nothing. Then said, not only will I not charge you, but I'll pay for you. 
The only way to get this victory is not through payment, but through praying. Yeah. When we come to agreement with another person and we consistently talk to God collectively, God will show us that he paid for us and honor by honoring our prayer on his behalf. And I pray y'all been blessed.